begins in like five, four, three, two, one. Hey, welcome to Wyatt. And I'm your host, Wyatt O'Brien Evans. Grr, woof, goddammit, woof, woof, woof. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, a reminder to all my YouTubers up in here. If you like what you see, if you like what you hear, click that subscribe button at the lower part of your screen. Click it, click it. I just love to click it. Now, my listeners, my listeners, my listeners, today's Wyatt is the next installment and in the continuing series titled, Let a Big Boy Keep You Warm. All about the bear and the big boy community. Yeah. Now, today's very, very special guest is Mr. Don Chewy. And Don's a popular influencer and highly acclaimed creator and producer of gay bear art with his D. Chewy Doodles brand. Now, Don has one hell of a, one hell of a enthusiastic and continually growing fan base, particularly across all of social media. Now, my listeners, my listeners, my listeners, let me tell you something. <laughs> this is part two of our very, very enlightening and entertaining conversation that began last week. And Don and I are going to sit down again and talk about the critical issues that impact the bear and big boy community, as well as the, you know, LGBTQ community, you know, across the board. And he's going to give us the 411, y'all, on his ambitious new project titled Conversations with My Ghost. Yeah. So Mr. Chewy will be joining us in like, 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 like a nanosecond. So welcome back, Mr. Chewy, part two. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me again. Listen, my listeners just love you. They find you adorable. They just, you're just the, the cat's pajamas to these people. Oh, thank yes. you. You're, too, you're being too yes, kind. Yes, it's being true. Okay, I'm going to start with this. Although your artistic work continues to largely portray the erotic gay bear, you seek to find the intersections of queer and marginalized cultural identities. Let's dig deep into that. I find that, as Mr. Spock would say, fascinating. Fascinating. Well... It, again, it stems from the issues of seeing um, representation mm -hmm. on in media, and I, I, it's only recently that there has been sort of a, a, a surge of Asian presence in media, especially cinemas. Mm -hmm. With the latest thing with Michelle Yeoh's film, uh, everything all at once scenario right. you know uh, coming in from crazy rich Asians to Sanchi that move the, the Marvel movies mm -hmm. you know so there's there's this acknowledgement and it's coming to front to, to the fore mm -hmm. now that's saying that look Asian representation is, is a big deal not to downplay the representation of other cultures. Sure. I think we do, I think there is space to share for everybody. So there is no going, you know, well, it's only this group needs to be represented or only this group needs to be represented. Mm -hmm. Everybody deserves to be represented in the media. For me, my artwork, homoerotic as it seems, I like to see color, variety, diversity in my own work. Exactly. I, 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 I I, I don't know if that feeds from my um, desires. My desires, I'm quite an eclectic person, I like to say. I, I find joy and beauty in 
most people, and I can't say 100% everybody, because <laughs> somebody counts. <laughs> but, I copied that. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I find love and joy for, for a, a lot of diverse-looking people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love, and I, and I lo- I, from the curvy side, I love to see the, the sensuous sides of the curves. Like you mentioned in your early interviews, that you are attracted to the thicker, beefier bodies. I love thicker, beefier. Me bodies. too. Me too. There's so, much, there's so much to feel. There's so much to see. There's so much to admire. But, but, on moving to the other spectrum is that thinner bodies. There is a certain musculature to them that I admire. There's a certain athleticism in the way that they move their bodies that I admire. So. And I love that sort of thing. And I and I really love. I know it makes me sound like a slut, but you know I love different cultures. I love finding out about different cultures or or finding com- common ground with different cultures. You know, Asia is made out of forty seven different countries. I didn't know. We're not all. The I same. did not know that. Yeah, ranging in from India. Southeast Asia, the Philippines, uh, Indonesia, Thailand, you know, with all this range of people within the Asiatic umbrella. So I've, even for me, I'm going, I love to know what our common grounds are. Well, you know, you know what I, I am an, I have to admit, Don, and my listeners, that I'm an EOD. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that acronym no. means? Okay. E-O-D, mm. it is not a disease. So don't write me. I got riddled, riddled right. all over the side of my leg. <laughs> Do not call me. Do not write me and say, oh, E-O-D is a disease. It's a disease that you know. It's a disease. No, E-O-D is equal opportunity dater. I like all cultures. <laughs> I see. Yes, okay. I'm an E O D equal opportunity data. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. I'm gonna have to put that on my there you own go. tombstone. I'm gonna have to put that on my own yeah. tombstone. <laughs> I won't charge you a thing. You can have that. Thanks. Your, thanks. Your question. I mean, you're my buddy. You're my friend. So I'll give it to you for free. But thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm glad to know that. I'm glad to know. I mean, you know, so so again, this this uh, it's not as intellectual as I like made to make it sound. Mm. This intersections between culture and, and sexual identities, but it's a big deal for me because the whole um, being treated differently, even by the community right. that I, I I I acknowledge and belong to, or I identify to. With um, which is the bear culture, um, and I, I'm really happy to see um, this surgence of um, Asiatic bears, uh, you know, from Taiwan, from Singapore, uh, from the Philippines. They're they're building their own um, subcultures within that, and sh- and the marvel of the internet is that we get to see it now. We get to see this representation so true. now. You know? So Mr. Bear Bangkok from Thailand, it's like, you know, oh my gosh, they're all of them are cuties. And I'm going, this is something that that I have strived to 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 wanting to see mm-hmm. being represented. So I open up Facebook and there it is, you know, I'm and it's and it's a wonderful feeling that there that you can acknowledge that there's a community that you could belong to. That there's a community out there who's actively uh, showcasing the best aspects of themselves out there, mm-hmm. you know. So, uh, so yes, that's 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 the thing. I, I put that, try to express that in my artwork. I try to express that in the works that I produce. This creative works. I always be am very aware, acutely aware of the need to be inclusive, the need to showcase and and you know magnify 
this sort of thing. Well, you know, that is so important. That's another one of the things that I really admire about you because we can never have too much diversity. Um, I want to talk about your ambitious, striking, poignant new project. Conversations mm. with a ghost, and the title is compelling. And you know what? Really, in in all seriousness, you should hire me as your PR guy. <laughs> I'm always go. as a friend. You won't charge me, I right? Know. As a friend, you're not going to charge me. Right? Know. I'm trying to find some more strings of being because I don't know about all that. You know, don't get all presumptuous <laughs> on me because I don't know about that. <laughs> But, you know, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll think about it. I'll think about it. So, okay. now, right. tell us about it. Well, um, it's a, I'd say, first off, this is that it's an emotional project mm. for me. Um, I never thought that, never in a million years that I would think that I would do a project of this sort of nature. Wow. And it's a journey of self-awareness, mm -hmm. self, uh, you know, reflectiveness, ref self-reflection. And um, it stems from uh, the passing of my life partner four years oh, ago. Wow. Was it four years ago? What's, what's, what's 2018? Four years That's ago. That's four years right. ago, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so he passed in 2018 out of... Um, no apparent reason. Oh no! The guy just dropped. I'm so sorry. Yeah, so, wow. Thank you. And I think because so the scenario is is that so let me paint a really back picture of why this is emotional for me is because um, we said our goodbyes in the morning. He left for work first because I was lazy and I just wanted to stay in bed a little bit longer. And we take public transport to work. Um, so he caught an earlier bus, uh, and we're, I caught a later bus. So it wasn't until 10 o'clock in the morning while I was in the middle of my own workplace that a, a policeman showed up and, to say that, I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, he died at work. And I said, what, was he choking on a chicken bone? What, did he die from getting hit by the bus? You know, what, what happened? No, he goes, we know we found him. Um, in the bathroom of the workplace oh, no. and all indication it looks like he just collapsed so it wasn't until the autopsy uh, that it was revealed that it wasn't anything biological it wasn't a stroke it wasn't a heart attack by all counts it just looks like he just died so <sighs> It was very upsetting to me because oh, yeah. the last memory I had was saying goodbye in that morning. He didn't die of any obvious causes. Mm. You know, if he was, he landed up in a hospital and he was clinging on to his last breath there, and I've made it, and I made it to his side. I think I would have a little bit more complete closure right. than I do right now Absolutely. because I have no answers. That's right. I have no resolution to why he left me behind. So all these scenarios play in my head, you know, and I'm an overthinker at best. Um, and from his passing in 2018 till today, it's always been in my mind going, do I go and see somebody like Whoopi Goldberg in Ghost and try to find a medium and try to yell at him one final time to go, all these things play in my mind, these conversations. So it wasn't until um, late last year that the my workplace, as I work for a university level uh, education facility, mm -hmm organization and they said you know as a part of your research project what would you like to do my first instinct was to go homoeroticism dealing with self-image issues dealing with body of colors uh, bigger bigger bodies of color that's my go-to mm -hmm. thing but then after a lot of conversations that was shared around 
they gave me this opportunity to go and say, why don't you take a sabbatical and produce a really profound piece of work? Right. Absolutely. So they gave me five months of sabbatical from active duty, active work, to focus solely on this research project. So, So this project came out and I'm going, do I have the legs to do this? I'm, I'm not an author. I'm not a writer. Uh, can I still produce a, a, a compelling story? So I opened it up to my Facebook friends to say, hey, look, you know, I, I, I'm exploring, investigating topics of grief, loss, and, and pain from your, you know, from, from, from your life. Are you willing to share your stories with me? And oh boy, boy. There was more uptake on this topic. People wanted to give and share their stories with me, give me their time to talk about their stories, about losing their loved ones, about losing somebody or something. Um, And I was taking on board all these things. And, you know, it made me realize that it's something that we don't usually talk about as gay people. Mm-hmm. And I think, and then del- dwelling deeper into it is that probably, and I, don't, and I know this is pretty long-winded. No, not at all. But I think it's because we grew up in a very traumatic ex- uh, years of our lives in the 80s, mm-hmm. where HIV and AIDS oh, yeah. was a killer. Absolutely. You know, people were dying left, right, and center. We were losing friends and family, chosen family, left, right, and center. We didn't have time to process this pain. We didn't have time to process the trauma. You know, being thrown into this whole pandemic again just brings resurfaces out all this trauma for mm-hmm. us. And and I think we never got to acknowledge the sort of pain that gay people experiences being ostracized from your own biological family, being left out of life uh, matters, such as, you know, hospitalization, such as insurance payouts, being recognized as the spouse, being recognized as a family member, legitimate family member by, by other family members. You know, so we have all this pain and getting and being realized that it's not a self-indulgent project. And it's very important to say. At first, I thought that, oh my gosh, I'm very selfish because there are other people who have gone through bigger trauma, bigger bigger losses, you know, plane crash, warfare, cancer. You know, I'm going. My my experiences seems quite insignificant compared to all that. But after all this conversation, the common thread of it all is that loss is loss, pain. Grief is grief. It doesn't matter. It's just we are all human beings and we share this capacity to mourn. So, yeah, that's that's the thing. You took the words right out of my head. Loss is loss and everyone has the right and the need to be able to express that loss and get healing. And I think too many LGBTQ individuals, Don, don't feel that they are worthy enough to deal with loss and to get healing. You know, yeah. I, we're so, we're yeah. so marginalized that we don't really believe in our core and our gut that we deserve healing. That's right. And your loss is just as significant as mine or Joe Blow's or what have you. And if you do not deal with it, it will eat you alive. And I'll say another thing before I shut up for a few seconds is that <laughs> you're actually doing, you're providing a needed essential service for a lot of us who you're the voice of expressing that, being able to express that loss and also to get some healing. So it's cathartic, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, it could. Yeah, and the catharsis is in the production of this mm-hmm. project for me. Yeah. 
and for the past month or so, you know, I've been putting it into paint, in painting up the work. The, the it's a graphic novel. Just so uh, for those who are just tuning in, it's a graphic novel project. So it's in a comic form. Um, this conversations with my ghost is kind of like the imagined conversations that I have with my partner on the other side. Who's on the other side? Uh, I won't give too much reveal too much, but it's it is a journey of um, surrender. Ah. Surrendering. It's a journey of, it's a story of surrendering to my grief. And it's a semi-autobiographical work because although it's based on the event that happened to me, it also picks up from influences from other stories that got shared with me as well by my friends. So, um, so it's it's not a I wouldn't say it's a self indulgent project, but it's more acknowledging the fact that we have a place in this world that even as gay people, even as the rainbow uh, community, we suffer, we grieve, we lose, we mourn, and it's something that we can. And and I gotta say, I'm I was very galvanized, bolstered by the fact that. I don't know it's because I'm more aware of this, but there are some shows out there that started to deal with this sensitive topic of how people deal with grief and loss. Humans, human, not just rainbow and not just heteros, human. Right. But um, I don't know if you were watching Pose. Yes. In that last yes, season. Yes, yes where uh, Pray Tell mm. um, was at a funeral home of yet another person who died from AIDS. Exactly. And the, the articulation, the, the, the words that the character was saying, I resonated so much with that. Mm -hmm. Like, how much more pain do we have to go through? How much more hurt can we tolerate to, within ourselves before we break down? Do we have a right to cry anymore? Because I don't have the strength to cry. Anymore. And that word, those words carried me through in my personal journey, not just for this project, but recognizing the fact that it's it's this. This are the things that people don't get. Mm -hmm. We they see gay people, they see the LGBTQI plus people as party people. As sex people. Stereotypes. It's all about sex. It's all about sex. Oh, look at them. You know, what are they doing to, between their legs to themselves? Mm -hmm. It's no, no, no. We have the right to exist as humans. And so, and then there was this Netflix show from Ricky Gervais um, uh, talking about the loss of his wife uh, okay. to mm -hmm. cancer. And, uh, I forgot what the title was, but the moments of the life that he led echoed me. I was doing, doing that. that. You know, I was doing those those things. I was locking myself in my room, don't want to socialize. I was doing all these things, antisocial behaviors, mm -hmm. being really cutting with my remarks. Because it's a subconscious way of me pushing away my own hurt, but pushing away people as well. Don't come too close to me because I'm hurting right now. I don't want to talk to you. So my remarks that I come up with is scathing because of that. And it made me realize as I was watching this show, I was going, and I was, of course, crying with it because I'm going, bitch, that's me. Bitch, I did. That was me. I did that. There was nothing in my pantry, in my larder. And I was eating cat food. No, I wasn't eating cat food. I wasn't eating cat food. <laughs> but, you know, I was eating, I was eating cereal right. for dinner because I can't be bothered going shopping. <laughs> Better than cat food, my friend. Better than cat food. <laughs> so, yeah. So, in the gist of it all, this, this, was it cathartic? It's in the process. Okay. It's in the process. And I think, yeah. And, and I think the theme of it is, is very, it's a surrender. And I, it touches on, made me more aware that 
I'm more spiritual than I like to believe. Mm. So, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, again, the project is, is, for lack of a better word, awesome. What I want to do, <laughs> oh, thanks. cliche word, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I want to go through, I've, I've seen yeah. some of the images. You were good enough to forward me some of the images and I want to show three of them. And if you would give commentary, I would greatly appreciate it. And okay. the first one is, okay. I call it, is number two, zero, image zero two, called the ghost. What is that all about? Mm -hmm. What is the ghost about? Um, at best, the ghost is, uh, a representation of my partner. The form, the, the form that he takes in my imagination. It's not an actual paranormal experience. That's another different project. I'm going to, yeah, in 2023, that'll be my project. <laughs> but it's more of a, it's more of a inner um, reflectiveness. You know those moments when we have a conversation in our heads and it goes around and around in circles. Mm -hmm. Kind of overthink things and, and, and we kind of like generate our own sort of scenarios. And we kind of get upset to our, with ourselves because we kind of offended ourselves through that conversation. So this that's what the ghost is, uh, representing in the form and shape of my partner, but reflecting my voice back to me, mm. telling me, of these things that's the revealing part of this project it's not an actual paranormal activity okay no. <laughs> okay what about number zero five the funeral I, I really that one in particular really i don't know how to put it really got to me it was i i, I can't I know why it got to me, but it's hard for me to explain it. I mean, my mom passed away in 97 and I took it really very hard, Dom and Don and my listeners, because if she was undergoing a chronic illness mm. and uh, they had to put her in the hospital and for several days and she was doing better. And at that time, I was doing stand-up comedy. So anyway, I was supposed to do a gig in North Carolina, and she was doing really well. She said, I didn't want to go. She says, go, 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 go. So after I did the gig, I got this call from my sister, hysterical. Mom passed. And it was such a shock to my whole being, to my whole system, because I left her, she looked good, but she died. I knew why she died because of the, you know, the illnesses that she had, but I thought she was gonna be okay. So it was the shock to the system and it was the guilt. I feel guilty for having left her yeah. and you know, it took me a while to get back there, to get back to D.C. And so they had already taken her to the funeral home. And the thing that I will never forget is, you know, they put the corpses in these, um, like, lockers, right? And you open that locker and the person comes out of it, starting with the head. And you could see where she had decayed. So I was like, it, it, was, it was a really horrible experience for me. So that, I'm rambling, that image really affected me. It was, it, it really touches you. It really, God, I know what I want to say. It really touches you. It really if you've ever gone through an experience of death, that image that you drew, that you created, really brings it alive. Yeah, a very emotive. It, That's an emotive. Ver, thank you. Very emotive. It brings it alive. So, um, 
Well, firstly, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry to hear that you had to that you went through that. And, I appreciate and that. I'm sorry for the loss of your mother. Um, mm. And I, I I find it very difficult to articulate right now because I can feel the pain. Yeah. It, through your description, to even through this video call right now, and I recognize that pain. Uh, sorry, it's just that's the throat, my frog. <laughs> you still look good. Don't worry about it. Thanks. Thanks. Filters, filters. Um, the the the. I uh, thank you for for saying that the um, that that piece of illustration really touched you. Touched it really you. did. For me, that this this image, this this piece, says to me that okay. So I'm gonna just share a little bit of a personal experience here because the work is semi autobiographical and it does come from uh, like my events, the events that had happened to me, mm -hmm. um, and I. At his funeral, at his service, memorial service of putting him, uh, he was cremated, uh, but there was an open casket uh, service. Mm -hmm. And there was two parts to the congregation. Uh, there was a lot of people that showed up, which surprised me a lot. Um, there was his workmates, there was his friends, my friends, uh, my chosen family, his own biological blood family was there. And it hurt because when he was alive, you never see this magnitude of love that was shown through. People wanted to carry his casket to the hearse. Because they said, this is the way that we are going to say our farewells. Sorry, it's just emotional. Sure. That was the good thing. Then the bad thing was is that his family denounced me as his life Oh, partner. no. We've been together for 15 years. Oh, no. These are the people that I went to Christmas dinners with and birthday parties. And they, they just said... Thank you to his best mate, Don. And I'm going, what did you just call me? And they tried to wrestle away from me, wrestle away from me, the decision on how to finally put him to rest. That image, this image here, has me in front carrying his coffin. It's the last act of defiance that I had. Being mm -hmm. up there, it was something that was beyond me, something far away that I recall only as a dream. Because at that moment, it was, I was consumed by not by grief at the time, but for anger. Right. You understandably know? and me standing on those and that as you can see in that image on the shores looking far away feeling melancholic and you know, hunched over clouds image in the clouds forming to this particular scene it was not a moment of sympathy it was not a moment of grief it was a moment of anger and defiance you had every yeah. reason to be defiant and angry absolutely and you had to let it out because keeping those types of emotions in will eat you alive yeah yeah so yeah thank you for letting me share that with you there was a I did tell you it was going to be emotional. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and thank you for letting me share because, you know, sometimes to release it, I don't care how long 
it has been, it's cathartic. It really is. So mm. I want to thank you and my listeners for letting me do that. What about image? Thank you. My pleasure. What about image zero six, which is no, 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 no. We just did that one. What about the next one, which is da 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 da? God, where's the other one? Yeah, zero six, the thinker, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was. Uh, uh, I don't think that image made it into the into the novel, the graphic novel. Well, uh, but it was something. But it was <laughs> something that I was feeling at that time when I'm being very retrospective and, and, and reflective on it. And again, the motif of a star in the night sky uh, seems to transcend uh, cultural boundaries because that's the one motif that when people are looking, remembering their loved ones is they look towards the night sky and looking for the star the brightest star, and that reminds them of them. Uh -huh. So for me, in that particular image, when I was drawing, I was tr well, try attempting to be hopeful, <laughs> reminiscing, uh, emoting, and, 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 and reconciling uh -huh. with the fact that he has passed into the beyond. Got it. He's now too far away for me to reach, you know. I mean, in a perfect, not in a perfect world, but in an alternate dimension, multiversal variant version. You know, I could have, I could have gone to the afterlife, investigated how he was, you know. If he was in trouble, I would be there to be the hero. But that's all very dramatic, isn't it? It's all very fantasy. So keeping myself grounded would be looking at this the star and going, this is where the departed will go. Too far away, but for us to remember, but near enough for us to remember. And this is also where my own mortality would be. So am I more accepting of death? I think... At this time, it's still too early for me to consider, uh, also for the lack of therapy, um, to consider, um, you know, the legacy that I would be leaving, the memories that I would be leaving behind, the friendships, the relationships, my own family. Where would I sit in the grand scheme of, of everything? Because we are only star stuff. Right? Where do we go from here? How do we transcend into the beyond? Yeah. I'm not too concerned about my own, the way that how I will die. Maybe my doctor is correct. Maybe I will die from a heart attack or a oh. stroke. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I better finish my project yeah. first before I kick the yeah. bucket. Sure. Yeah, you better. <laughs> when... <laughs> When will when will conversations with my ghost be available, and how can we purchase copies? Oh, that's great! Great to know because I haven't actually thought about you know putting it out onto the market because it's all been very personable sort of thing. Maybe I do need to hire yeah, you, my PR guy. You really do. <laughs> So at the moment, uh, the moment is in a digital format. I haven't thought. I'm still investigating on how to put it out there uh, as a publication, printed uh, graphic right. novel. But at the moment, it's in a digital format, so it's going to be mostly like a PDF or an ebook. Uh -huh. um, and hopefully, I'll be wrapping things up in five weeks' time. Wonderful. Because that's the end of my sabbatical, and I and I want to finish this, and I want to complete this before that. I think that would be a very good idea. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm messing with you. You know, I got much love for you. You know that. <laughs> the pressure, the pressure. You know, you know, you got your own your own feelings about pressure. The deadlines looming. Your publishers, yeah. your editors are going. Where's the next book? Where is it right. now? Where's your manuscript? And you go. Come on, stop. Right. <laughs> you can't rush creativity. You, you cannot rush creativity. <laughs> 
You can't rush perfection. You can't do it. <laughs> anyway, tell us what projects and appearances and all that great stuff you have going on for the rest of 2022. Well, um, for 2022, I've got a few artistic projects that I've got under my belt, so I like to explore that. Must to do with a bit of a painting, with art. Um, I've got an exhibition that's going to be coming up in August. Wow. Uh, it's a, a, in a local place. I, I'm still investigating on how I can bring this to a more international uh, level, like wanting to go... Uh, symposiums, talk at symposiums or conferences, or at, even attend, uh, you know, some art exhibitions offshore. Um, but again, with the whole world just opening up at the moment from the lockdowns, right. from, from the pandemic, I'm still investigating that. Because it's because being in New Zealand, as lovely as it is, we are quite isolated from the world because we are we are not landlocked. We are surrounded by water. And it takes us time and money to get on the plane to go anywhere. So Yay. we'll see. We'll see how that how that one works out. Maybe the virtual space is, is my domain for now. Maybe I'm still investigating that. But yeah, yeah. Keep on the lookout. There's there's quite a number of projects on the way. Well, 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 Mr. Prolific, tell us <laughs> how can we grown folk connect with you. Contact you. Give us your social media. Uh, well, I I've got a Facebook, I've got Instagram, and I've got Twitter. Uh, Twitter is for the uh, first pics. Uh, it's for the uncensored artwork that I put out, things that would put me in jail, uh, Facebook jail or Instagram jail. Um, so. Facebook is predominantly my channel to connect mm. uh, with my friends, with me. Um, it has my ramblings, my moods, posts, daily moods, and also the, of the artwork that I currently produce. Um, whereas Instagram is more of a work in progress sort of a, a channel where you see more sketching, more doodles, things that I scribble down or whatsoever, uh, those sort of things, and musings. You know, like my around me, my personal music, uh -huh. and yeah. So, all three channels are under the same name, which is D Chui Doodles, and that's D C H Double O I Doodles, all one word, lowercase. That's where you'll find me. I love it, Mr. Don Chewy. Thank you for dropping by, Wyatt. You know what, man? This was such both of these parts were such an essential conversation, and I really appreciate you opening up to us. Thank you so much for having me again, and thank you to your viewers and listeners for for paying attention to my own rambling. So, but I really appreciate this. Thank you so much, Wyatt. That's I had a fun time. I did too. Well, you know what? You're the best. You're better than all the rest. <laughs> oh, don't let your other guests hear that. <laughs> You flattered, you flattered the show off. <laughs> Thank you so much, Silver Tide W. <laughs> Thank you, Don. So there you have it. You can find the official Wyatt podcast page on WyattEvers.com, which is the go to a destination for LGBTQ news, features, commentary, and entertainment. And WyattEvers.com, y'all, is visited, is visited by more than 100 countries on the regular. Oh yeah, baby. And WyattEvans.com is where you'll find my smoking hot, AJWD hot, nothing can tear us apart series of novels. The current installment is titled Frenzy. Yeah, Frenzy and Frenzy. It's just, just, just chock full of, of, of steamy masculine romance, intrigue, mystery, action, danger. I'm talking danger, y'all, like in Lost in Space. Danger, Will Robinson, danger, danger, danger. And let's not forget, heaping helpings of erotic passion and, and plain old down home nastiness. 
and the predecessor is entitled, is entitled rather, I can't even get it out, Rage. And my listeners, get ready for the next installment in the Nothing Can Tears Apart series of novels. It's going to drop later this year. It's called Delirium. I say it, Delirium. Oh, yeah. Now, you can follow me, White O'Brien Evans, your host, on Facebook.com, on Twitter, and on Instagram. So until next time, y'all, woof, goddammit, woof, 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 woof.